Welcome to lecture 4.2. This mini lecture, we're going to talk about split brain patients. What is that? Well, split brain patients are people who have had the connection between the two halves of their brain severed. So you'll remember that the corpus callosum is the bridge that connects the right half of your brain with the left half of your brain. In some cases, doctors have cut the connection between those two halves as a, in an attempt to cure or minimize the impact of epilepsy. Now, what is epilepsy? We'll talk about it more during the semester, but epilepsy is when the neural activity in your brain gets out of control. You can imagine a firestorm of neural activity that spreads throughout your brain. This neural activity makes it impossible for you to control your body as you're having an as you're having the seizure. So imagine if you were trying to cross a busy street and you had an epileptic seizure, then it would be potentially catastrophic. So how to treat epilepsy? Well, in the old days, um, one treatment involved this cutting of the corpus callosum. Why? Well, the thought was, all right, if you have an epileptic seizure in one hemisphere, if we cut the corpus callosum, there's no way for that epileptic seizure to travel to the other hemisphere. So the individual having a seizure would have at least half of their brain still functioning and they could get around and get themselves out of trouble. Uh, I've got a link here where you can watch a video about epilepsy. Um, but for the purposes of this lecture, we're going to focus on the corpus callosum and what happens when you cut it. Remember the concept of contralaterality. That is, the right half of your brain controls the left half of your body and sees the left half of the world. Your left half of your brain controls the right side of your body and analyzes what it sees from the right side of the world. But what happens when those two hemispheres can't talk to each other? Well, remember that language is in the left hemisphere, at least for most right-handed people. If language is in the left hemisphere and I see information in my left world, left side of the world, that information is going to go over to my right occipital lobe, my right visual cortex to be analyzed. Okay. Normally, if you asked me what I had just seen, the language processes in my left hemisphere would connect with the visual processes in my right hemisphere through the corpus callosum. And that information would be integrated and I could say, it's a coffee cup or it's a stapler. But what about split brain patients? Well, it turns out that they cannot use language to describe what they see in the left half of their world because without a corpus callosum, with that cut, with the two halves of the brain separated, the, the verbal processes, I'm sorry, the visual processes in your right occipital lobe cannot communicate with the language processes in your left hemisphere. Isn't that wild? Um, you know what? There's a very famous cognitive neuroscientist named Mike Gazaniga, and uh, he had spent a great deal of time studying split brain patients to try to understand what the various hemispheres uh, of the human brain are doing and how they, how they normally connect. And let's take a minute here to watch a video of a split brain patient. And the things I want you to notice are how absolutely normal this split brain patient, whose name is Joe, how absolutely normal Joe appears um, and how complicated the situation you have to create before you can see what Joe as a split brain patient is unable to do. Okay, the first thing I want you to notice is that Joe, who's in the shirt with the white and the blue, he moves normally, he's having a conversation. This is Mike Gazaniga. They're having a perfectly normal conversation. Um, he can make jokes. Um, this is Alan Alda who's doing the interview. There's nothing that stands out as unusual about this man, Joe, even though, unlike you, he has two separated halves of his brain. When Alan Alda and uh, Joe go into Gazaniga's lab, they're asked to do this task 
where without looking at what they're drawing, they have to draw two shapes simultaneously. Alan Alda, who has an intact brain, is unable to do this task. He's just terrible at it. He cannot get one side of his brain to stop talking to the other side of the brain. So the two figures he's trying to draw keep getting commingled. But watch what happens when Joe does the same task. Joe has no trouble drawing a circle with one hand and a square with the other hand simultaneously. Those two pictures are as if two different people drew them. Let me say that again. Each of his hands is acting as if it is controlled by a different brain, which in fact it is because the two halves of his brain are not communicating. Now, a thing that's kind of funny, and uh, I wish the sound on this video were better. It's, it's terrible, which is why I'm doing a voiceover. But when they ask Joe to look in the middle of a display and to simply read the word he sees, he has no trouble saying the word storm in that case. He has no trouble saying the word piano. But when they present a word to the left half of his visual field, he has no idea what was there. Why? Because he doesn't have the language processes needed to describe it. So now you know what a split brain patient looks like and how they go about the world essentially with two different or non-communicating brains in their heads. Wild. Okay, that's it for this lecture.